What's up guys, Kenan here from Marshall Goldman Motor Sales and today I'm going to be teaching you how to drive a sequential manual transmission. Now before we begin, you might be asking yourself, well, isn't that just an automatic? It actually isn't. Um, it's an automated clutch, but underneath it is a manual transmission. So the similar concepts of lifting on, blipping on downshifts and that sort of thing do apply. This video isn't an argument of this is if this is a replacement for a manual transmission because Nothing replaces a manual. I personally have never owned an automatic car before, only manual cars. But this video is gonna teach you if you should find yourself behind the wheel of a sequential manual gearbox car, how to drive it. So before you set off in this car and before we get into do anything, you wanna make sure that your doors, uh, trunk, frunk, and engine compartment are all nicely closed. If they're not, this car won't let you put it in gear, uh, which is a frustration with these things. So make sure everything is closed before you set off. The car we're using for this tutorial is a 2000 Ferrari 360 Modena. Now this tutorial is going to be applicable to Lamborghini E-Gear, later Ferrari Formula One transmissions, oh, those sorts of cars. There might be some little um, variations between them, but they're largely going to be the same concept. So let's go over the controls. The controls on this, you see you have steering wheel, no buttons on it. Um, that's just the way these cars were back then. You have two paddles. The right paddle is your upshift paddle, left paddle is your downshift paddle. Two pedals, um, because again, it is not a fully manual transmission car. And then down here, you have your center controls for reverse and your automatic option. Because this car can shift itself, you simply choose auto and then it will shift by itself. Um, and then this little dinky toggle is for your reverse. So you lift this up and pull it towards you and that will put the car in reverse. You wait till the car beeps and then you're in reverse. Then you also have your handbrake. It's important that when you park the car, you pull the handbrake. You can park the car in gear or in neutral, but I re recommend just like a manual transmission car, if you're gonna park it, pull the handbrake. Um, it's also a common myth that you just yank it as hard as you can. You don't actually, you wanna lift it up until you feel de decent resistance and you can feel that the car isn't gonna roll and then it's up. It doesn't necessarily need to be pulled as tight as you can. You're gonna stress out the Bowden cables. Um, so those are the controls for this car pretty easy to use, pretty straightforward, to be honest with you. Another thing this car has is an immobilizer. Now this is going to be specific to Ferrari 355, Ferrari 360, um, 575 cars of that era. Um, this is just a security measure that these cars came with. So before you would begin this particular generation of car, you press the, emo the, press the button for the immobilizer, in this case twice, because the car just locked itself. Then you have 30 seconds to put the key in the, uh, in the uh, ignition barrel, turn it, and then put the car in neutral to begin by pulling both paddles towards you and turn the key. Just like that, we're in business. Other than that, those are your controls. So let's talk about how you actually drive this car. Now again, it's a manual transmission car underneath. So when you're at a stoplight or things like that, best to put the car just in neutral. Um, just so Ferrari recommends that you do this when you pull up to a stoplight so it's not wearing the clutch while it's holding, while the automated, um, hydraulics are holding the clutch in. Um, additionally, if you're on a hill or something like that and the car is in neutral and the e-brake isn't on, you will roll backwards. Just like that, just like a manual transmission car. So you gotta be thinking about that stuff. And if you've never driven a manual before, these are just a couple things to keep aware. If you've driven a manual before, second nature really. So let's go ahead and put the car in gear. So we're gonna pull the right hand paddle. That'll select first gear. You can actually hear it in the, you can hear the gearbox go into gear. And then you're just gonna roll onto the throttle just like you would in a manual transmission car. You can actually feel the clutch begin to bite and then you're off and moving. Now, once you're moving, um, a couple of things to think about are, you know, when am I gonna need to stop next? Obviously you're not gonna pull, there's no clutch to press in. So you can just go, you can let the car sort of roll down to about 1500 RPM and then put the car in neutral and roll to a stop. One of the things to note with early Ferrari transmissions in particular, if you're rolling um, and you're in neutral, you can't put the car in gear until you stop again. It's one of the early features that was kind of annoying to be honest with you. Um, they fixed it, I believe, with the 360, but the 355, which had the first generation gearbox, you actually have to come to a stop, put it in gear, and then go again. There's something to be aware of. So okay, so we're gonna pull out here on the main thoroughfare again. Um, we'll do the exact same thing and we'll shift into second gear. All right, so off we go. Feel the clutch bite. There we are. And then when you go into second gear, you actually want to lift off the throttle, pull the pedal, then lift off the throttle, and then come back onto it, just like a manual transmission car. You know, so you're going to be playing this game of sort of lifting on and off the throttle, 
and that's going to smooth out your shifts. Now, as you see, I just did a downshift there, um, and one of the things I did, I pulled the paddle, lifted the throttle, and then that smooths out the shift tremendously. Um, I'm not going to pretend it feels like a dual clutch car, but it does smooth it out significantly. Um, and it's difficult to demonstrate on video how much it smooths it out, but it makes a huge difference. I'll do a shift without doing it too. Um, we'll see. Let's see if this turning radius is good enough. Can we do it? Not quite. So good, good chance to go into reverse here. So paddle pull, pull both paddles into neutral. Then you lift up the selector and you can hear I'm in reverse. And same thing as in first gear, you just give it a little bit of throttle, get you rolling, and then you're back in reverse, put it in neutral, and then pull first gear, and then you pull the paddle go into first gear, you're in first gear again. So again, I'll go over this. So we're while we're going straight, I'll get it up in the second gear here. So all right, so we're in second gear. So I'm gonna blip down in the first gear. So we're gonna pull the paddle, blip the throttle. So and that's it. It's a really easy way to smooth out the gearbox. Most people don't realize that in an automatic transmission with uh, paddles, you don't actually have to do that. Now, when you're on higher throttle in this car, you don't have to lift off the throttle nearly as much. Oop, I got a transporter. I'll have to wait for it. Um, when you're, so when you're in high throttle in this car, you don't actually have to do that. That's when these transmissions are at their best, actually. I don't really have enough room to do that, and this isn't my car, so I don't want to. Um, but... When you're up in the higher RPMs, you just simply pull the paddle and just keep going. Keep your foot in and just keep going. Um, the transmissions will shift pretty pretty abruptly. I'd say they're, you know, they're, you definitely feel like the car is doing something. That's one of the benefits of this car is that um, you actually feel like you're there's something going on. It's not nearly as smooth as a dual clutch transmission, but you feel like the car is doing something, which is why it's been kind of an unusual resurgence of people liking um, these cars as opposed to manual, not opposed to manual transmission cars, but just as opposed to dual clutch transmission cars. So again, we'll go first, second, and into first and stuff like that. All right, let's so get going a little bit. All right, second gear. And see, I didn't blip there, and it was a little more, you got a little more jump, and I'll blip on this downshift here. Nice and smooth. We'll do the same thing since we're in second gear. coming off the throttle, rolling back onto it, pull the paddle, lift off the throttle, then roll back onto it, much smoother. Again, pull the paddle, lift the throttle, and that's our downshift. It's very easy, um, and again, if you've driven a manual transmission car, you're gonna, you're gonna find this to be second nature, um, but it is, uh, it's definitely not difficult, um, but it, that, that said, there is technique to doing this. A lot of people who review these transmissions and say they're no good are people who don't know how to drive them seen that in a lot of cases with cars like the BMW E60 M5, um, Ferraris like this. Um, people just think that they're bad transmissions. They're actually not. It, it just requires a little bit of mechanical sympathy and mechanical knowledge um, to drive this car smoothly. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope they gave you a, an overview of how to drive one of these cars. Um, we have loads of manual transmission and SMG cars all on marshallgoldman.com. Go check them out. Um, this 360, we just got in and it'll be live on the site very soon. Um, but thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and we're happy to answer them. Thanks, guys.